Hi, my name is Paul Hoover, and I have the distinct privilege of serving as the Chief Strategy Officer for Kettering Health Network. So one day while getting lunch, a physician passed me and he took a double take and he said, Paul, are you doing okay? He said, you've lost a lot of weight. And I said, well, I sure hope so. I've been uh, eating less and moving more. If I could have just sat on the couch and eaten cheeseburgers all day, I would have much rather preferred that to the hard work that I've been putting in. You see, over the last two and a half years, I've lost over 75 pounds, but more than any number on a scale or a number on the back of my blue jeans, I've learned about myself. I learned what it took to lead myself. I learned how to make sustainable change in my life. I learned about my relationship with food, and I learned about harnessing the power of community. And I wanna share a little bit of that with you today. You see, I knew for a long time that I needed to make change in my life. I was overweight and I was living a pretty sedentary lifestyle. I ate the typical standard American diet, sad. So I ate dead animals and lots of highly processed foods and I consumed much more than I should. So I was talking with a friend of mine one day and we were lamenting a challenge that we had at work. And she said, you know, Paul, leading people is easy, but leading yourself is difficult. So fast forward a couple of days later, I was sitting in a physician office waiting for my checkup. I got on the scale and I looked down at the number and I was completely mortified. It was the highest number I had ever seen. I was frustrated, dejected, and I knew what was coming next. The doctor came into the exam room and he went through my lab results and he said, Paul, your lab results are not as good as they should be. And in short, he told me I needed to eat less and I needed to move more. What struck me about that conversation was he didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't blame me and he didn't judge me. He simply just told me I needed to do better. So I went home and started thinking about how I could go about achieving sustainable change. I remembered a couple of years before I saw this story that was in a publication called The Physician Quarterly about Dr. Harvey Hahn. He had lost about 50 pounds and that started to pique an interest in my life. For a long period of time I've owned just about every piece of exercise equipment and all of those ended up hanging clothes or blankets or just ending up on Craigslist to be sold for pennies on the dollar. So I knew I needed to bring about sustainable change. So I started dreaming and I started dreaming big, not about some number on a scale or some blue jean size, but about how I could make my life better through simple actions. So I started with the philosophy, you do you. I'm gonna do myself. I'm not gonna live somebody else's playbook. I'm not gonna follow some fad diet. I'm simply gonna do what I know that I need to do. And so I started by taking a philosophy that the past was the past and not letting that hold me back. And I started dreaming about how I could bring about sustainable change. So I started looking at my life and looking at where in my life I needed to make change. So I started making space in my life. I decided to get a bicycle and start riding with my family and friends. So great exercise. We have beautiful trails here in Ohio to take advantage of, and I absolutely loved riding the bicycle. There's nothing more fun than going out for a 15 or a 30 mile bike ride and realizing at the end of that, once you get halfway out, you gotta get the other half back. And so for me, it was a great form of exercise to start to build up my cardiovascular endurance. The second thing I did was give myself just a little bit of grace and realize that I had not gotten to the point where I was at overnight and it wasn't gonna change overnight. And again, I simply focused on exercising. And I started with making trades. I made trades in my time by trading Netflix for starting to exercise by moving more. I started with making some small incremental changes in my diet. One example that I give folks is with coffee. I used to love coffee with cream and sugar every morning. And I started by saying, well, I wonder if I can do it without sugar this morning. And so I tried it and I said, I'm gonna just do this for three weeks. What I found was after the first couple of weeks, I didn't miss not having sugar in my coffee. So I started making changes from creamer to half and half, half and half to milk, milk to soy milk. And then recently, about nine months ago, I've given up caffeine. But I simply started out at the time by nudging my will in a different direction by starting to make these small incremental trades in my life. And for me, it worked. Today, I eat a fully plant-based diet. That may sound pretty radical to you, and it would have sounded pretty radical to me at the time, but it started with making change. 
So how did I make things stick? So for me, the weekends were a great way to get out and to ride bikes. So loading up the bikes on the bike rack and going out to the trail, tons of fun. But what I realized was that I needed to incorporate more exercise into my daily habits and routines than what the bike trail was gonna allow me to do with a family and with work commitments. So I simply focused on what things I could do that were fun. I was over at some friend's house one night, this is all pre-COVID, so we're playing cards and one Saturday night and they're bragging about their fancy new Peloton. I call it Pelo bragging. And I got intrigued and I, they said, hey, Paul, why don't you come over and try this thing out? We think you'd really like it. I like biking on the weekends. I said, all right, I'll come over and try out the Peloton, but leave me alone, lock the door, don't come down. As long as you hear me huffing and puffing, good. If you hear me stop breathing, then you can come check on me. Because I didn't want any uh, spandex clad photos floating around on the internet. So I rode for 45 minutes and was completely hooked. For me, the Peloton was something that I could see myself doing every day that was easy, sustainable, and for me, it was fun. The other thing when I first got the Peloton is I went all out. I charged hard and focused on getting PRs or personal records, but what I realized is I quickly burn out just a few days of this. So I started focusing on the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of my exercises were gonna be moderate intensity, easy conversation, things that I could sustain for hours upon end, and then I would sprinkle in about every 20% of the time high intensity interval exercises. Hit or high intensity interval exercises like the salt that you put on your food. A little bit goes a long way and it helps spice and enliven everything up. So for me, the Peloton was an easy way to incorporate exercise into my daily routine and it was something fun that I could do and it was easy for me to track progress. And so for me, those were ways that I was able to incorporate exercise into my daily life. I started dreaming about how I could start to make change. And what was interesting was I focused on simply exercising first. I didn't change everything at once. I focused on changing one thing at a time, getting that to stick, and then simply working to incorporate those things and make those things habits. So one of the things, if you've ever talked with anybody who's done an endurance sport such as a triathlon or a marathon, they'll jokingly tell you that those events are eating competitions wrapped around either biking or running or swimming. And the premise is that uh, your body has about an hour and a half worth of fuel or sugar stores on board. But after that, you have to start to replenish those fuels. And we see professional athletes do this all the time. So for me, I had to change my relationship with food. Rather than simply something that I sought as a simple pleasure item, I had to change my relationship from food to fuel. And that small change made a big impact in my day-to-day -day life. So one of the things I started doing was just starting to get an idea of what my food looked like. And I started tracking my food intake on my smartphone. My smartphone has an app uh, that allows you to input the food and it shows you the overall calories that you consume, the macro and micronutrients that you're consuming. And I started to see some trends. I was consuming significantly more calories than I was burning off exercising. I was not eating the types of macro or micronutrients that I needed to have to have a balanced diet. And so I started to make those changes. And what I found was as I started to incorporate whole foods, whole grains and plants, fruits, vegetables into my diet, those things started to come in line. There's tons of protein in beans and tons of protein in rice and quinoa and other things that I didn't even know existed. And the funny thing was, as I started to incorporate those things, it started to have a big impact. What I found was the data that I got by inputting my food gave me knowledge and that knowledge gave me power. The photo that you see on the screen is after I ran my first marathon, it took me over five hours and 15 minutes which part of me was a little bit bummed because I felt I could have done it faster. But then the other part was that's actually a pretty good time for a first time marathon. And what I'm most proud about is my kids made me a medal and met me at the end of the trail after completing the 26.2 miles. Nothing is more precious than having your kids cheer you on and uh, clap for you as you go about trying to achieve some goal. The other thing I found was that this is not something that I did in a vacuum. I didn't do in isolation. I found that I invited people to come with me. I invited my friends to go ride bikes with me and countless times I had people meet me at the trails and go out for bike rides. 
my middle daughter, Autumn, who you see on the screen here, I said, hey, do you want to run a 10K with me? She goes, I don't know. I said, well, what if we did it at Disney? Well, all of a sudden, she was in. We trained. We downloaded the training plan from Disney. Jeff Galloway has a simple method, run, walk, and you run for 30 seconds or 60 seconds. We ran for 60, and then we would walk for 30. And we did that our entire training time leading up to the race. And we successfully completed the race faster than we had ever uh, run before. And as you can see by the smile on her face, it was a time that both she and I will never forget. The other thing is encourage others. I think you will find, as I did, that there are people that are at all various stages and walks of life. And I know that for me, it was exceedingly helpful having friends and family encourage me as I would go out when it was cold or rainy, as I would get on the Peloton when there were times when I did not want to, but to see that a friend would either give me a high five or would uh, say, hey, I'm coming Saturday morning and I'll meet you there at seven o'clock. And so I knew even if the alarm went off, I had to be there. I had made a commitment. As I finished my first marathon in July, I started thinking about whether or not I could do something that to me seemed completely unachievable. For me, I started to dream big about something that I thought was completely unattainable. A dream started to take hold that I would run 39 miles on my 39th birthday. And so I set out on August 15th on my birthday at 5 a.m. on the Little Miami Trail, and I started out running. My daughter rode her bike with me about six and a half, seven miles, and then I picked up on the Ohio Buckeye Trail and ran down to Caesars Creek. My friends and family met me along the way. They brought me water and change of t-shirts because it's August and it's hot here in Ohio and uh, fuel. And at the middle of the afternoon, I completed 39 miles on my own two feet. Something that for me is the pinnacle of transformation. Not being able to run a quarter of a mile or walk up a flight of stairs without getting winded to being able to go 39 miles on my own two feet was truly remarkable. This is a photo of my family and I uh, celebrating at Caesars Creek in the fossil bed. And I was overcome with emotion and joy because I knew that I had finally started to become the person I had always dreamed of myself being. So folks, when they hear that I ran 39 miles, they say, well, Paul, you just must run all the time. That couldn't be further from the truth. Just like you, I've got 24 hours in my day. I've got some statistics here of what I did over the last 2020. And I share this not to brag about the specific miles of the accomplishments, but simply to highlight how making those small changes every day accumulate into monumental milestones that beforehand I would have never thought were possible. So I rode about 2,500 miles last year and about 177 hours. I ran about 1,100 miles over 204 hours. When I added that up, that's only about 4% of the day or one hour a day. Now, I was talking with a friend earlier and they said, well, that sounds pretty easy. Sure, but do it every day. So for me, I understand that the power of habit has to incorporate into my daily life. And so I simply set about making exercise part of my daily routine. My goal for this year is to complete 1,500 miles. So far, I'm on track. This is a photo of myself and a couple of friends and Dr. Han, which made this run all that much more special. This is two photos of before and after I wanted to share with you. The one that you see with me in the suit is back in February of 2019. And the photo after I took uh, back this December. The jacket that I'm wearing, while it may not be as stylish as what all the cool kids are wearing today, that's the jacket that I wore back in high school. So if you take nothing else from today, I wanna encourage you. I wanna encourage you that change is sustainable. You are not a victim of circumstance. You are capable of making change. I encourage you to dream, to dream big. Bigger than any number on a scale, you're bigger than any clothing size, I can tell you that you are so capable of achieving so much more. But start out by making small incremental changes in your life and keeping the focus on dreaming big. The past is history, but what you do today shapes your actions into the future. Remember, it's your life. Make it a great one.